like a smattering of applause. See, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to the stage. Oh, there you go. Yeah, have a seat. Well, oh, thank you very much. What a lovely color. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, we've got to talk about this sweater, for starters. <laughs> Is there a story behind it? Did someone make that for yeah, you? Someone did make several. They have a place where they do sweaters of all sorts of characters, and they said, would you wear this? So for five minutes I said yes, and then they ran away. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but it's been very popular. Yeah. Not, not only because it keeps you warm, but it's, it's part of the, the Beau Perfect theme. Mm -hmm. But I must say, everyone's been so polite, and, and it's been great. We couldn't come a couple of years ago, but my wife and I have had a terrific time so far, really. Still plenty of time to go. Well, it sounded like a Donald Trump cheer then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Let's no, not no. go to that topic no, to I'm, start no, things I'm, off. No, I'm not going there. I <laughs> She's a hater. She's a oh, sorry. No. <laughs> well, uh, you've been here for a couple of days. What's your uh, thoughts on Halifax so far? Did you go out and have dinner oh, anywhere last fantastic. night? Yes, we did. Yeah, lovely food here. You know, people so polite, saying thank you, and also delivering terrific beer. I had a giving. <laughs> no, it really is. It's excellent beer, and it's English. Um, um, well, we are going to talk about uh, about um, your your character uh, in just a bit, Boba Fett, of course. But you've you've got a lot of credits to your name as well over the years. You were in Doctor Who, and we are going to go to the audience questions, but. Uh, off the top, uh, you've traveled and you've do done lots of conventions, so you know we've, we've got this crowd of fans here. Why do you enjoy going to these conventions and having this opportunity well, to talk to your fans? I think it's really going back to when I was, I started when I was 12, and it's giving something back that I've had a really good career. Uh, it seemed to happen at the right time when someone said, we'd like you to play this part as the policeman. And it's just, I went on working, working, working all the time. And so I, I've been, I think as an actor, I've been very lucky. The Dark Side. <laughs> You're next on my list. <laughs> this is a setup. <laughs> well, I gotta ask about that. In fact, you know, before uh, we met just backstage, everyone was telling me how delightful and, and uh, cheerful and hilarious you are, but of course the, the character you're most known for, Boba Fett, is this sinister force. So do you often find people caught off guard by, by who you are in reality? Do, do people like shy away from you thinking that you're going to be mean? Well, some, some people do, but it's the, the kids don't care. They say, oh, it's Boba Fett, you know, anywhere in the world. Oh, it's Boba Fett. It's the, the ladies who sort of say, you're Boba Fett. Oh, yes. And I said, well, I'm just, I'm just walking past, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's such a, you know, good character. And that's why that's luck, you know, to get something. And I was in the West End in a play, but I was filming during the day, so I was absolutely full of work and my brain. And I suddenly thought, don't worry about it. You're going to put a helmet over your head. No one can see you. <laughs> of course. How silly. I was getting so worried, you know, and it's not... But, you know, a terrific time shooting the Star Wars films. And, and it's still, you're reminded every day, someone will come up and say, nice. <laughs> and then you go, what does he mean? How do I reply to this? How do I, nice. Uh, you mean, oh, the sweater, no, Boba Fett. Oh, yes, of course, Boba Fett, yes, it is nice. Well, I've, I've had the pleasure of, uh, of talking to a number of the, the cast and crew that were involved in the original Star Wars mm -hmm. films, and it's obviously something that's gone on to have this lasting legacy. New fans who are, you know, even seven, eight years old. Now, um, why do you think Star Wars has had this lasting legacy? Why is it something that transcends generations? I think it's because it's pretend. <laughs> it's, some, it's something that you're not getting too much of. It's, it's, it's pretend. I'm going to be there. People dress up. And they, they make these incredible costumes. Uh, the kids say, Mum, can I have one? For, can, can I have one, please? My seven-year-old granddaughter, she's, she's 
Grandad, is it at all possible just to have a little look of bits that you're in? I don't want the bits that other people are in, but the ones you're in. <laughs> so she's absolutely thrilled to bits and she wonders where you are here. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just the little one. They're so important as well and they say, are you in and doing another film, Grandad? I said, no, no, not at the moment, I'm not. But people keep thinking I'm going to get out of the Sarlacc pit. And... <laughs> but that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what they say. Anyway, I keep picking up a phone and saying, am I going to be in the new... No. <laughs> but if you change your mind, would you... <laughs> no, it, 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 going back to the thing, it was just a fantastic time, the shooting. I was seven, eight, nine, nine days, that's all I did. Wow. Well, I think it's the sweater that upset people. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to the floor, so there are some uh, microphones uh, set up, so if you have questions for Mr. Bullock, feel free to line up. Um, why do you think Boba Fett uh, stood out in the way that he has? I don't know, it's just looking at the outfit and the, the boots, the shoes, the everything. Jetpack. Jetpack. Oh, sorry, I forgot the jetpack. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I'm not looking down here, but I will in a minute. Um, extraordinary ears. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> you know, you, you were saying he only shot for seven or nine days, um, mm -hmm. but he is one of the most iconic Star Wars characters. What makes him so iconic? Um, well, I always said on, on my benefit that being Boba Fett, if you stand still, it's far stronger than waving a gun and saying, I'm Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just stand still. And then you just a slight move, body move. You try different things. The scene with Jabba the Hutt, I remember just there, and he'd be, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And you just stand and just stare him out. And that's, I think, the strength of Boba Fett. Mm. Good, good costume, jetpack, what's that for? What's this for? The spikes in his shoes, he can do deadly things. But just being hardly anything. It was a cheap job. <laughs> All right, we'll go to the floor for some questions. We'll go to the left first and over to the right. Go for it. Hi, welcome to Halifax. Thank you. Um, as you said, you're in a helmet for a lot of the movie, in fact, all of it. Um, so were you surprised when people started recognizing you and uh, <laughs> saying, oh, you're Boba Fett? Well, yeah, it, with, <laughs> it's, it's only happened a few times that people said, you're Boba Fett, aren't you? I said, well, yes. He said, I recognize you from a magazine f before and after. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known who you were. But, <laughs> but it was very polite. It's, it's funny, you, you can put the helmet on for the day and it's quite comfortable, but the jetpack was pulling here and dragging you down. That was awful. And, and, and dripping, dripping with sweat. Sorry to say it like that. But, but it, it was a terrific film to do, and the, the least you put into it, the stronger that character is. It's funny, you could get somebody up on stage. Should we do that? One? Yeah. You know, one person on stage. Maybe we shouldn't get Steven Universe up yeah. here. Yeah, come on. Well, that's not Steven Universe, is it? Ladies so and star. gentlemen, this is the young Boba Fett. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> well, Boba Fett doesn't walk like that. Who's been, who's been teaching you? <laughs> so, right, let's do... I'll, I'll leave this here. Right. You can sit on the gap. No, I'll have to go. <laughs> no, I'll have to go now. Right. Beware the dark side. <laughs> You're too cool. <laughs> you won't escape. That's, that's just destroyed my image. <laughs> You saw that, you destroyed it. I was just about to do something and that was it. <coughs> the, 
<laughs> this is a setup. It really is. It? <laughs> well, so tell me, let's say, what's your first name? Owen. Owen. Odin. O Odin. Or Logan. O -D -I -N. Oh, Odin. Sorry. Yes. I'm getting frightened here. He's... <laughs> Well, I'm going to name your name as I like. <laughs> no, you're too... So what's it like to sit next to a, a sort of quiet Boba Fett? Awesome. <laughs> Have you got a script down there? <laughs> no, you haven't really. But it, it's nice to see you here, and I think it's... So do you like the character of Boba Fett? It's fun to watch. Yes. Doesn't speak much, does he? Not really. Maybe you could write a script, a story, something like that. Do you want to be an actor when you're older? Maybe. I don't know yet. It depends on what they pay you. <laughs> no, but I think you are cool. You've arrived here, and I think you, you, you're there, almost. <laughs> Drama school, but you have to really work hard at that. Several parts you could play, just look at them. Need to comb, comb your hair, or is that a wig? <laughs> a little bit. No, you, that's good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just say, you know, very good. He's going to do it. Give it up for Odin, everybody. Are there any sightseeing places to go to? Peggy's Cove is one. Peggy's Cove. Don't let him know. Oh. You're cool. Do you giggle and laugh when you're not supposed to? Maybe. We'll just see a little bit of it. <laughs> you going to be here all day? Or, or do you have to go rush back and get some sandwiches? Oh, everybody! <laughs> right, we'll go back over here for a question from the crowd. Uh, yes, I uh, was wondering about the uh, standalone Boba Fett movie that's planned in the next couple of years. Uh, has you heard anything about it, and have you been approached to appear in it? Um, well, he's probably heard of it, first of all. <laughs> no, um, there is talk about a stand-up movie, uh, and I call it stand-up. I think it, it would be good to have the character in some form, but I'm not sure what's going to happen there. I mean, people said, are you going to be in the new movie? No, you wait to see what happens, but I, I, I think that's not going to happen. I, I'm going to say something maybe controversial, but personally, I don't want a Boba Fett standalone film. Because, hear me out guys, the strength of the character is the mysterious nature. You get too much of a Boba Fett backstory, now, my idea, if they're going to do one, you tell me whether you like this idea, <laughs> is that Boba Fett is in the story, but still has a mysterious character. Like, he's not the main character of the movie. You're following someone who's, like, on Boba Fett's trail or something like that, learning from Boba Fett, and Boba Fett doesn't say much, do much. Do you think that's the right way to take the character, or am I way off base? No, I think you're right spot on. I think he just... There, there can be... <laughs> just meet your friend, and... <laughs> No, I think, you know, the least you do, as I've said this before, the least you do with that character, the stronger he is. He just stands still, waiting to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how he'll be. And I don't think it'll be a, a, a big role at all. But, you know, we wait to, to see. Don't know. Because another film's being made now, so it just goes on, you know. And, and, um, and it's terrific that it is going on. Uh, you know, I hope they carry on, you know, because it's, it's a fun adventure, a bit scary, but not too much scary, so we wait. Well, there was a lot of uh, reaction when Disney acquired the rights to the Star Wars uh, franchise, mm. and of course we were all 
concerned what we might get, but then I, I think overwhelmingly we really enjoyed The Force Awakens, right? And we're all satisfied. Force what, Awakens. Yeah. Did you see it? And, and what are well, your thoughts? Yeah. Well, it's funny because my wife and I went to see it uh, at our local cinema. And we sat there in the cinema and going, this is terrific. We were the only people in the cinema. <laughs> well, because all the kids at, at school. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you just wait. But that, the reaction there at my local cinema was huge and incredible. And it, it, it'll, it'll go on. It's fun. It's, it's, it's scary, as I said before, but not. It, you know, you're, you can allow, my father would say years ago, a horror film. I'm not, you're not going there. You are not going there. But it was so well done. Towards the end, he said, well, cover your eyes and we'll go and see a bit. But that's the same with Star Wars. You don't need to do that. You just, that's great. Go back to the floor. I think it's Mr. Archer there. Mr. Archer. Nice Hi. suit. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, how much of the character's background were you given before you took the role? Was there a dossier about who he was, or were you in the dark as much as we were? No, funny enough, there was no, nothing at all, no bits of paper with one line going this way. Um, you, don't, you don't need to, and I think it was quite right not to mention anything at all, and said, we'll see you tomorrow, and that's a piece of the scene was done. They said, right, we, we need for you to go down there and turn, and it was all movement, so there was no lines to look at, and nobody said, oh, you need this, you need to do this, and have you got the lines yet? I said, no, I haven't got any lines. Well, you've got something, so you've got to get the script, but I didn't. <laughs> so I was in the play during the day, or sorry, during the evening, and then filming during the day, so I, I was concentrating more on that. But. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, lovely laughter. This is sweet. This. We'll go back over here. What was it like working in BBC Studios for Doctor Who in terms of the environment as compared to walking on a big feature film? I'm assuming <laughs> the facilities were a little different. Yeah, um, yeah, Doctor Who was terrific. We went up to Chepstow where the big castles were. Um, William Hartnell was the, the Doctor that I first saw, and that was just, you couldn't believe inside, this would be just grey, musty, dirty, and it was just, it was no set, it was virtually a wall which was pulled to use the back of that wall, and there was ne never a, a big scene or anything, it was just done locally, just a little piece of cardboard, that's how, I, and I, I was much younger then. So you just they say, grab hold of this, right, action, go, right, see you later. And it was done, but it somehow worked. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's got to be pretty cool to be a part of the, you know, two of the biggest sci-fi franchises of all time. Um, why do you think Doctor Who has had its lasting longevity? I mean, we're still making new episodes today. Well, it's incredible. I mean, Doctor Who is popular all over Europe. Everywhere, and a lot of the doctors go to the conventions, the, the guys, and they, you meet and say hi, you know, literally crossing paths. One's going off on an airport, going to America. Some of us are going to, well, anywhere in the south of England, somewhere. But it's a, it's a huge franchise, again, really, really good. We'll go back to the floor, back over here, hello. What character would you like to be if you weren't Boba Fett? Han Solo. <laughs> that, was a good, that was a very good answer. That. <laughs> Did you make any friends with any members of the Star Wars cast while you were, while you were making the film? Yes, we saw, I mean, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, all the people, all the guys, the rest of the cast were mainly English, so you'd, you'd always do that. At the end of the day, you'd go, oh, and, and you've got to somehow get that costume off because you were drenched and, and really, really tired. And so doing for three days, four days, doing the play as well, I used to get to the studio and quite easily go, you're slightly late. I said, yes, I know, sorry, but filming, it was the final scene. 
I just get change ready for the play and get there and go, oh, crikey, what do I say the first line? <laughs> and that, that sort of, you suffered from that, doing two jobs at once. But, but in the end, it was all right. Not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to have two jobs. And sorry, I interrupted. Um, but I did want to ask. I mean, uh, just bringing up uh, some of the the actors. Did you get to interact with George Lucas much? Well, yeah, should jo film? George. I find George Lucas is very nice, but shy. But that's a nice thing to have. Someone who's really the big man. But you say, oh, good morning, good morning. No, not morning, chaps. What's happening? Come on, let's get that. None of that. It's just. And he was writing and looking at a screen, probably for the next piece. So he'd be doing his little bits and pieces. It was a lovely atmosphere, quiet, but can be blazing at times. Mm. See, there's more people lined up at this microphone, so we'll go back to our next question. Hello. Hello. When and how did you find out that Darth Vader was Luke's father? <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, it's me. Spoilers, man. I must, I must make a phone call. <laughs> did Did you know that Luke was? <laughs> well, you. I, yeah, I know you would. Yes. <laughs> God, yeah, that's amazing. But was that a, a secret on set? Because I've heard stories that yeah, a lot of people didn't even know. Until yeah, they actually it was watched the film. to begin with. Yes, it was a secret. People just you had your bits and pieces, three lines there, looking at it, that's all you get. You weren't given anything that makes someone say, oh god, there's a whole script here. You, you, you were kept quiet. Which is, which is right in a way, it would have been upsetting for the whole film. So do you remember though, was it when you were watching the film that you, you saw that moment, or did you have any... No, I didn't, it? no, just... Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> you, yeah, a lot of stuff you, you just carried on. Some people said, have you got a script? I said, no, I don't have a script. And people have pretend scripts, you know. What's my line, what's my line? Yeah, okay, no, it's okay, I'm just looking at the last lines here. It was absolute rubbish, you didn't have any lines at all. <laughs> no, it was, it was a funny time, but a great time. And how lucky one was to be part of that. Let me go back to the crowd, I see a Sailor Moon. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, how did you decide on the voice? Well, it's funny. The, the, the voice was finally done by an American, um, which, to begin with, I thought, well, they don't need to use, I can do that. But if they wanted an American voice, then, then they would do it. But I can remember, funny, one bit that made me laugh was when I had to say, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Well, I can remember that. They said, right, stand by everybody. Jeremy, are you okay? Ready to shoot this? Taking hand solo up into the carbonite. And I turned round and then turned round and said, put Captain Cargo in the cell. <laughs> I can remember putting my hand over my mouth saying, what are they? What's the matter? What's happening? No, nothing. Nothing's okay. Because I suddenly realized they're never going to see my face, the, the mask is over here, they're going to redub the whole thing. But to begin with, when I said, put Captain Cargo in the cell, <laughs> yeah, they must think, well, who is this guy? What's he doing? <laughs> you could laugh it off for a while, but to begin with, I thought, no, this, you must behave, come on. But it was a good, good question. Let's see if we got another one over there. Go for it. Would you attribute your success primarily to luck or to just the willingness to say yes all the time? That, that's a very good question. Both. I think both. It's the luck. Is, you've got to put your work in. But then there's the other time. It's just lucky. They say, Jeremy, I think you'd be great for this. So you didn't have to audition at all. I think you're great in this. You know, will you do it? I said, well, yes, maybe, you know, and you, you get starstruck a, a lot when you're a young actor, 14, 15, but, you know, I, I, I go with you on it, it was luck. You've got to have some luck. 
Do you have any uh, other advice for aspiring performers? I mean, you, you do have uh, quite uh, a resume of uh, various performances over the years. Well, mainly, it's just keep going. Yeah. If you think you can, if you think you can be a decent actor, go for it and tell your mum or dad. Dad's always saying, if you go anywhere near that place, that's it. There's no going out at all, that's it. This is, this is now my father. It's ridiculous. What do you think? But as soon as he saw me on television, he said, that's not bad. <laughs> but you, you, you go for it. You know, don't, don't get upset don't, if someone says, well, we're going to do this play, but we don't think you're quite right, but thank you anyway for coming. And then the distraught, the tears in the eyes that you've been turned down for a comedy or... Um, just keep going. It's like you, you must keep going. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was about to say, there aren't any more uh, questions from the crowd, so if anyone has any, feel free to come up to the microphone. Uh, was, was there a role that you were really hoping to get in your career that, that you were passed over for that we might be aware of that, that was maybe no, someone no. I thought of? One dangerous obsession was a theatre play I was in for a year, and it was just three of us on stage, and there were ten minute intervals of nothing. It was creepy, it was a thriller, <laughs> really nasty thriller, and not nasty, but a, a thriller. And just looking at each other, and I'm in this house, and I arrive back, and my wife's there with this man with a gun. And there's this, there were silences, and I thought, the, the audience won't wear this, they'll go, you can't just sit there for ten minutes, but we did. There was a scene where you just sat, looking at each other. And just and you knew, just at the right moment, did I see you move? I don't know. I was the one suddenly getting really scared. My wife in the play was more confident and talking him through. I think, well, what would be a good idea for you? You could do this and do this. Don't tell me I've had a... And it, it was a thriller that really had people go, oh my God. And they had a special gun which looked as though it was going to explode and go, but it didn't. It was a, it was a good play. I was in it for a year. Cool. Long time. What was it called again? A Dangerous Obsession. Dangerous Obsession. Check that out. We got more questions from the crowd. Go for it. Uh, I'm just wondering, how did the uh, role in uh, Revenge of the Sith uh, come about? Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. The, they, uh, suddenly they asked me back. Um, I think it was George Lucas at the time. He said, it's not very big, but it's a, it's a pilot. Captain Colton, and they'd already got a name for the character, but it was nice, they said, it's a day, we, you did so much work on that, would you like to do this? And that was nice, I said, well, if I sit around long enough, there'd be several other parts. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a mixture of things, so that was nice. That was a that was big surprise, but really nice surprise. Where did you shoot that one? Uh, out, I think Ealing Studios, it was... Gosh, it's so long ago. Um, it wasn't at Elstree. It was, I think, Ealing Studios. They had special. They built up the, the ship. So you were actually on a practical set for yes. a yeah. Uh What do you think of the the current trend of so many of our films being just CG spectacles, where almost everything is green screen with just actors, you know, standing in front? Well, it's a I suppose, in a way, they're calling it a new thing now. That you're just working on against the black wall, against this, against that. And people feel they can't be sort of a real person. Another question from the crowd? Go for it. You were talking earlier about um, how the character was very mysterious and that's part of its power. Uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, during the prequel series, when... Uh, they introduced your father as Django Fett, and uh, and they were producing the clones, and and, and but he wanted a uh, a pure uh, copy, I guess, as Boba Fett. What were your thoughts on that? Oh, I think you know at the time, you know, people gave it far too much nonsense. They said this new new set of films are terrible. They were they weren't that bad if you. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I don't think they were, you know, I think, um, I think the storyline, having the dad 
you know, uh, it, that was nice. That was bringing in another character, and it would mean Boba Fett would be uh, as he goes on. I mean, it could have been now. It could have been Boba Fett, but a bit older. But I, I thought it was good because it would have taken it a further thing. But people criticised the newer films then. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't, I don't think it was just. Well, they do have a lot of fans as well, especially, oh, the, yes. you know, yeah. younger Star Wars fans absolutely love the, yeah. the prequel films. Many of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you approached by that, were you approached regarding that storyline and, and would you have been able to play Jango Fett? Since Boba Fett was technically a clone, so... You would have really looked like yourself. You're calling me a clone. <laughs> oh, I see. You mean clown. Yeah. <laughs> I see. No, I, Because I think... nobody would have realized that you were Boba Fett because you were always wearing your helmet beforehand because we never yes. saw any faces until that time. Yeah. When, when Django Fett was, was being cloned on the planet and, you know, and we saw a little mini, mini Fett. What, what was that film with Will Smith? Because they were all clones, weren't they? Was it, was it that film? Uh, oh, that's robot. it, yes. That's the I, Robot, yes. And I certainly was on that film. But, um, you know, there's so so many people wanted to be in the prequels. Uh, several actors just to do, just to say, I'm in Star Wars. a new film. Yeah. So that was good. I think everybody would love to. Even you would. <laughs> Be yawning. <laughs> we'll go back over here for another question from the crowd. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi there. Hi. Um, I would like to know a little bit more about some of your professional highlights, your influences, your acting mentors over there. Someone who maybe really stood out, who really kind of steered you in a certain direction or gave you some sort of great tip. Great tip. Um, can you just repeat that just slightly? Sorry. I, I would like to know a little bit more about your professional influences and mentors or other actors who really inspired you over the years, someone who really stood out. I think probably the first person would be my aunt, who was a continuity girl on films, and she would go through a script, it was a kid's script, called The Greyfire School, I don't know if you ever saw it, it's so old. But that was live television going on. There was a different technique being live. and um, I think Sir Laurence Olivier was the first person I said, well, oh, he's just perfect. I mean, I hope he'd speak. And then he'd speak again, and he would just pure. And I never actually met him. He was in a far building, and we were doing a student's rally and uh, many years ago and I said that's so long to live here what if I just drop past and walk past and say excuse me that, that he, he was terrific oh I imagine so yeah oh. awesome thank you my pleasure let's see there's someone else with a question go for it uh, I mean you've had a long long career lots of rules but are there any rules that you would really want to do that you haven't had the chance already? So I assume stage more so, but screen if it works. Um, probably Hamlet. I didn't get to do it. I did half a... It's gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Hamlet would be, would be the, the next one, but I'm too old for that now. That's, that's life, you know. You can't get it. Uh, now let's see. Is there anybody? Can we have someone on stage? Is that possible? Do we want Odin again, or do we want to bring someone else up here? <laughs> not, not Odin. No. <laughs> okay, I see a Cyberman at the back who's just ready to go. Oh, it's oh, it's Boba Fett actually. How did I mistake Cyberman? Yeah. It's out of control. It's kind of hard to see from up here. Oh my goodness! Look at this. This is a children's program. You have to count, right? Uh, uh, how many feet? Fantastic, actually. 
Yeah, they're, they're lightweight, aren't they? Lightweight. Uh, milk and water. That's great. It's a different shape. So, ladies and gentlemen, if any of you would like these boots, um, we, we can arrange this to be sent to you. Um, and, and a new outfit. I think this is this is, looks more dangerous than the Boba Fett garb. Just in case you want to see it. I don't know. That's really my internal monologue during most of these things, so... Oh my god, I didn't actually think I'd get up here! <laughs> well, you did, you got here, you know, it's great. It's a bit difficult having cups of coffee in a break, or, you know, good all this. Uh, well, quick detergent belt through the back. I see, so you can do things like this, use that, and it fires up, gets you, gets your coffee. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry, I knew the right person that came asking for a part in the new film. Was that, was that you? Well, I, I don't really do well with lines, so yeah, strong, silent type of work. Uh, well, I, I'm already the strong, silent type. Get there. Now, that's terrific. Sorry, please. I was just going to ask him, did you make this yourself? Actually, the big guy over there did. Did you had met him yesterday? Yes. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Very, very, very good indeed. Yeah. yeah, it's all the uh, 316th aircraft balloon. Cool. <laughs> you must start. You, you've got a business here. You should. You must start. Start setting up here and building some costumes. Terrific. Well, Jeremy, you, you have these um, impressive cosplayers. You must see so many Boba oh. Fett's come by your booth at conventions. Has there been one that's really stood out, or have you had an interesting experience with uh, with a fan coming up to you at a convention? I've seen, you know, there's been several Boba Fett's coming up, and they're specially made, you know, the, the dented helmet, and those guys. And the amount of work people put in, it's just incredible. And charity, they give up their weekends to put on the outfit and march down there, raising money. That, that, that's been going on for a long time, and they deserve, well, all of you deserve, you know, sometimes you get the accolades, oh, Mr. Bullock's here, this is great. But the other guys, they're just building and working every single weekend into their outfits. That's terrific. I'm actually, uh, I actually just got a few more things to touch up, and I'm applying with the Mandalorian Mercs. Oh, good for you. Yes, thank you. Are you French Canadian? Uh, not originally. Not originally, but you must say, I am French Canadian. <laughs> I don't know if you'll get away with it. Oh, you are now. You're, you're... I am French Canadian. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Very good. Most impressive. What about disintegration? No disintegration. <laughs> <laughs> well, his weekend is complete. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're still all right for four seconds or four minutes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sit, sit, sit right. See if you can do this as well. Um, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. <laughs> Captain Solo with the cargo hold. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Just put Captain Cargo in the solo. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, shush. People have forgiven me, but now you're setting it up again. Help. Uh, oh, do we have one more question from the crowd? It's a Wookiee. <laughs> Uh, look, you've got the part, you don't have to start. Well, I was actually going to wear my Wookiee mask and come up and just make the noises, um, but my children thought that would be stupid, and I said that you seem like you're so funny that you would just, I would have made the noises and you would have went, yes, and I would have went and went back to my seat. But, but I, I had one statement to make and a question, so my statement is that you're obviously an incredible actor because uh, Boba Fett is very mysterious and just stands there and he looks, you know, you're so charming and being a huge Star Wars fan, I never would have suspected that. 
So if you were a sucky actor and your charmingness had come across, you would have been more like Boba Fett would have been like. So you're obviously very good because he didn't seem charming at all. Um, so the question, the question is, um, you and Harrison Ford, did you like hang out and joke around or did you like avoid each other to stay in character so that there would be that tension and animosity? Uh, very well said. Uh, you're welcome, you know. Yeah. What do we do? We put the script down and where do we go? Oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to say. She was saying that. It's my agent. <laughs> Have you got an agent? No. Oh, well, forget it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, that'll do. <laughs> so you didn't interact much with, uh, with Harrison out of character. What? Harrison Ford, you didn't talk with him much? No, I, it's funny, I hardly ever met Harrison Ford because everything was... I was there, he was there, he was there. But a lovely guy. Yeah. It was amazing when he, when he went through that and broke his plane. ankle, yeah. and then crashed the plane. <laughs> not, not on purpose, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> well, but I, what I wanted to do, sorry, just before... Um, we need one person up on stage. Another person? Another person. It's an acting piece. Sure. You don't need a Wookiee, no. We need somebody who can talk and not in a mask. This is a pretty amazing costume right there. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pointing at you. <laughs> now, as we depart, or before we depart, this is now the part that I've always wanted to play, Hamlet. So we need one person, if it's possible, to come on stage. Don't, don't right be there, right. front row, bow tie, not bow tie, yeah. regular tie, I just like bow ties. Right. We're going to do Hamlet, just the opening piece. So you, you can just walk gently like this, to be or not to be. Can I get a mic? That is the... <laughs> This is theatre. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to sleep, to die no more. Right, can you do that? I'm not going to remember the whole thing. <laughs> no, sorry. I'll, I'll be here and I'll make the, the proper words come out. Okay, okay, so you just want me to just lip sync? No, do the first. <laughs> <clears throat> to be or not to be, that is the question, and that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually read it yet. No, you haven't read it? No. Did you get a script for this? <laughs> Did you try? <laughs> try and drag it out to be yeah. or not to be. That is, and can you cry in, in, like that? <laughs> Can you do it here, now? Just let it go, that's good. But so far, so far that's really good. And then you can say, just in your own time, to be or not to be. So, I'm just gonna walk away. And then you just stop. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to sleep. <laughs> to die no more. You're next. <laughs> Jeremy Bullock, everybody! Bubba <laughs> Fett and Elton and Robert Esk. Enjoy the rest of the house, God, everyone. We'll see you back here in a bit. Yeah, I see you back here in a minute. Thank you so much. Thank you.